Muslims celebrate Idil Adha today with gratitude and joy, albeit in moderation. Hot Metro Line Records, remarkable achievement of 117%. Good afternoon and salam Idil Adha to all our Muslim viewers. You're watching News on 2. I'm Zaleha Khairi Ismail. Muslims throughout the country celebrate Adil Adha today with gratitude, joy and filled with spirit of sacrifice, albeit in moderation. Good weather in most places enable the faithful to smoothly perform their prayers, followed by the obligatory ritual of sacrifice and gotong royong at mosques, surau, villages and housing areas. More than 5,000 Muslims joined the young Dipertuan Agong, Sultan Muhammad V, for Idil Adha prayers at the Al Sultan Ismail Petra Mosque in Kubang, Korea, and Kota Baru this morning. The Idil Adha sermon was delivered by Imam Sabri Abdullah, while Imam Abdul Bari Abdullah led the prayers. Muslims who truly appreciate the spirit of Adil Adha will be able to foster brotherhood and unity among Malaysians. Stating this, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak said the unity and peace in Malaysia is indeed a gift that should be preserved. In his Idil Adha message at www.najibrazak.com, Datu Sri Najib noted that this year's Hai Raya Haji celebration is special as the country co-celebrates the 60th National Day as well as the nation's championship in the SEA Games which ended yesterday. The Premier stressed that Muslims who ignore the principles of unity will open the space and opportunity to the enemies of Islam to break through, weaken and destroy Islam and its people. Dato Sri Najib added that it is compulsory for all Malaysians to be fair to each other, regardless of religions and beliefs. The Idil Adha celebration is also backed by the joy of sending the highest number of Hajj pilgrims in Malaysia's history. In Jakarta, Indonesia, thousands of Muslims gathered in front of Al-Azhar Mosque for the Idil Adha prayers. Young and old men, women and children filled the yard of the mosque, which can accommodate more than 5,000 people. Hundreds of sacrificial animals will be slaughtered and the meat will be distributed to the poor later today. Indonesia is the country with the largest Muslim population in the world and Idil Adha is one that is celebrated on a large scale. Malaysian Hajj pilgrims congregated in Arafah for Wukuf yesterday and prayed for Malaysia to continue to be blessed with peace, stability, prosperity and safety. The Arafah sermon was also delivered by several religious experts at 13 other pilgrims' camps. In the sermons, it was said that the strength of a nation would only reach its peak when the people's solidarity was well maintained in the spirit of brotherhood, as pointed by Prophet Muhammad Wasallam in his Qutbatul Wada or farewell sermon on the 10th year of the Hijra on the 9th day of Zulhijjah at Mount Arafah. Some two million pilgrims from all over the world packed shoulder to shoulder for an emotional day of repentance and supplication. Wukuf is an obligatory part of the Hajj pilgrimage. After the sermon, pilgrims withdraw by themselves or in groups and recite prayers until sundown. They leave Arafah after sundown and head for Muzalifa, where they will spend the night under the open sky before heading for Mina. Earlier yesterday, more than a thousand pilgrims also participated in the World Hashtag Quran Hour program, reading the Quran for an hour as a symbolic gesture to promote reading and understanding of the Holy Book. Meanwhile, Deputy Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Dato Dr. Ashraf Wajdi Dusuki, who read the sermon and prayer for Malaysian pilgrims, stressed on the importance of total submission to Allah and obeying the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah. Kita ingkar kepada perintah Allah. Kita ingkar kepada wasiat Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nabi berulang kali di tempat inilah, di padang inilah, di dalam khutbahnya yang terakhir. Nabi yang menyatakan kewajipan untuk kita sentiasa berpegang kepada Al-Quran dan Sunnah Rasulullah. Di dalam khutbahnya yang terakhir, Nabi menyebut, Tarak tu fikum amrain, ma intamassaktum bihima, lam tadillu abadah, kitab Allah wa sunnah Rasul. Aku tinggalkan kepada kamu dua perkara. Sekiranya kamu benar-benar berpegang kepada dua perkara ini, kamu tidak akan sesat selama-lama. 
The number of Malaysian pilgrims performing Hajj this year is more than the 30,200 quota announced initially. Tabung Haji Chairman Datuk Sri Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahim said the latest headcount of Malaysian pilgrims at Arafah for the Wukuf on Thursday saw the number at 42,200. Now, during his earlier visits to the Maktabs in Mecca, Datuk Sri Abdul Aziz had hinted that there were more Malaysian pilgrims this year than officially announced, but did not disclose the figures at the time. He had said the additional slots were possible following Prime Minister Dato Sri Najib Tun Razak's request to Saudi ruler King Salman Abdul Aziz Al Saud and this indicated the good ties between the two countries. Speaking to Malaysian media in Arafah on Thursday, Dato Sri Abdul Aziz said 20 pilgrims have since passed away, including three on the day of Arafah. During work of 12 pilgrims remained hospitalized, including four in coma. The other eight were being evaluated to see if they were capable of continuing with their Hajj. Prasarana Malaysia Berhad Prasarana has surpassed its initial target in the operation of its Al Mashair Al Mugadasa Metro Southern Line MMMSL set by Saudi Arabia's Public Transport Authority PTA. As of 4 p.m. yesterday, MMMSL had recorded 117% train movement during this year's Hajj season, surpassing last year's performance. Prasarana's Chief Executive Officer for Integrated Management and Engineering Services Prime, Masnizam Hisham, said during the same period, a total of 332,000 passengers had used the train from Mina Station to Arafah Station to perform the Wukuf in Rafah. Saya ingin melaporkan uh, Prasarana telah berjaya pada pukul 11 pagi tadi untuk membawa seramai 332,000 jemaah haji daripada Mina ke Arafah. Uh, pada masa yang sama juga uh, berdasarkan uh, pergerakan tren, Prasarana telah berjaya uh, membuat pergerakan tren sebanyak 117% iaitu 272 daripada 232 yang telah ditargetkan. About 5,000 visitors gathered as early as 6 p.m. at Dataran Merdeka to celebrate the World Hashtag Quran Hour yesterday in conjunction with the National Day. The event themed Bangsa Berbudi dan Penyayang started after Isha prayers and was led by the Imam of Masjid Negara. The memorable event saw Muslims joining in the hour-long Quran recitation, United as a Nation. The hashtag Quran Hour started with a calling of takbir for Hari Raya, Aidil Adha, led by Minister in Prime Minister's Department, Datuk Sri Jamil Khebahrum. The event continued with solidarity in Ngaji for five minutes, where participants read one page of the Surah Yasin in silence to understand deeper its meaning. The Surah Yasin was then recited by Kari Junior Harith Hakimi and was also recited by other Yasin flag bearers consisting of religious icons and popular artists such as Johan Asari while intermittently featuring tadabur or interpretation of text sessions. Participants included those from the Royal Malaysia Police, Armed Forces, Rohingya refugees, students and the general public. A windfall of incentives await Trunganu's Kuala Lumpur 2017-29 SEA Games medalists. Assuring this, Trunganu Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Ahmad Razif Abdul Rahman said that 59 of the state's athletes who had represented the country had won medals. On the lot, 26 backed gold, 13 silver and 10 bronze. Not only that, Trunganu is also the largest contributor of 74 athletes for the Games. Trunganu's Kirin world champion Azizul Hasni Awang had won Malaysia's targeted 111th gold. Dato Sri Ahmad Razif said that a grand reception would be held for the athletes and an appropriate form of incentive based on the state's award scheme would be given to the medalists. And that concludes this afternoon's edition of News on 2. We'll be back with more updates at 7 this evening. I'm Zalia Khan Ismail once again wishing all our Muslim viewers Selamat Hari Raya Adil Adha and thanks for watching.